Hey guys, it's MJ the Student Actuary and we're going to be talking about chapter 1 uh, for subject CT5 which is life assurance contracts. Now basically you just need to know this diagram um, to understand the, the theory behind this chapter. Essentially life assurance contracts are based on life and in life uh, two things can happen. You can either survive, in which case you get a pure endowment, or you can die, in which case the whole life assurance kicks in. So what I mean by um, the pink one being pure endowment based on survival means that if you survive to a certain age, this contract will pay you money. If you die, this contract will pay you money. Now this contract um, depends or goes infinitely into the future. So if you put an expiry date on it, it becomes known as a term assurance. And if you combine a term assurance and a pure endowment, you get something known as an endowment assurance. These are the four main um, life assurance contracts. And yeah, now I'm going to go and talk a little bit about the mathematics behind each one. Um, just remember to understand the mathematics behind this um, video. Um, you will need to understand the probabilities that are explained in subject CT4. Uh, but just a quick recap, TQX is the probability that a life aged X dies within T years. And you just sum up all the times that it's alive and then when it dies immediately. Um, feel free to pause the video and read all my little side notes. And then TPX is the probability that someone who's um, aged X will survive T years. And remember that formula from CT4, um, it's just the negative of the total force of dying, which gives you the chance or the force of staying alive. Okay, but yeah, that's CT4 stuff. CT5 stuff starts with this whole life assurance. Um, this is the most simplistic contract. What it basically does is you take it out on a life and whenever that life dies, you get paid a sum assured. So the payment is made on death. So the present value would just be the discount value of the expected life um, of the person, plus one because it's this is the simple case with discrete where payments are made at the end of year of death. Um, the symbol for the expected value of this value here is known as AX. And it is simply the summation of all the instances where the person survives a little period, then dies, plus the, that they survive a little period, then dies, plus a little period, and then dies. And that the survival is represented by Kpx, and the death is then Qx um, plus K for the age. Feel free to pause and read my little notes in the white. Um, variance, you'll see that this formula is going to be... Um, the same with all the terms and it's also I mean this is simple what CT CT3 um, where variance is equal to the squared minus the expected value squared and all that does is it changes the interest rate you then have the it can be payable immediately on death and then it just becomes continuous instead of discrete okay then you get your term assurance term assurance what this does is it pays out um, if someone dies, but only if that person dies within um, a certain time period. So the whole life, if you took it out on yourself, it would pay out an amount whenever you died. Term assurance um, with, a, you know, with a term of, say, 10 years will only pay out if you die within 10 years. If you survive to 11 years and then die, you get nothing. Now... I want to make another video explaining why term assurance is a much better product than whole life assurance when it comes to families taking out life insurance to protect their family. But that's another video. Um, interestingly, the mathematics um, for the present value, it's the present value, yes, yeah, so the discount value of the age if it's with well below n years, and you get nothing if it's above. So essentially, it's exactly the same formula as the whole life assurance, except you're summing up to n minus 1 now, instead of infinity. And because of that, we introduced this new symbol uh, for the expected value. 
and that is AX1, um, you know, round angle N. So what we're doing here is the one says that the condition depends on the life. We'll see later when the one can be on that side. Um, yeah, and then pause the video there if you want to read up on that stuff. Okay, pure endowment. I like pure endowment. What this says is that if you die within a certain period, you get nothing. But if you survive um, to like, you know, 10 years, you get paid a lot of money. Well, in this case, one. Um, so yeah, this is, you get paid if you survive. And this is more of a savings product, whereas the other two have been, you know, risk protection products. So what you would do here is you'd enter into agreement with a bank or a company that says, if I'm alive in 10 years time, you pay me some cash. But if I die within those 10 years, uh, you don't have to pay me. And because of doing this, you can get a much higher return on your investment than if you just simply put it in the bank. But anyway, I'm going a little bit off topic. Um, you can see it's, it's almost the reverse of the term assurance. However, you can see that we're discounting to N and not a random variable, which makes the formula much more simple. You know, you're just discounting and it's the probability that that person survives. So here you can see it's a very similar um, symbol, but now the one is based on the term because that's the more important condition. You can see the variance, it's the same pattern. Uh, feel free to pause the video and to get more of the mathematics. And then you have something known as the endowment assurance, which I've already mentioned. It is the combination of the term assurance, represented in orange, and the pure uh, endowment, which is represented in pink. Now, in my opinion, this is a really dumb product because what this is saying is that if you die within a period, we'll give you some money. And if you survive to a period, we'll give you some money. Um, it's a mix of a risk product and a saving product, which, like I said, I think is kind of dumb. Um, yet, funnily enough, people like paying buying this product. It, it actually sells quite well in the marketplace. Um, and yeah, you can see that the formula AXN, there is no one because it can depend on either of them. And you can see it's just adding the orange, which is term assurance, and the pink, which is pure. Um, the variance follows the exact same pattern and it's kind of the same idea when it becomes payable immediately. You then get things known as deferred contracts. Um, in the market, you'll see that every single product has a deferred component. Well, when I mean every single, the majority of them have. Um, it's known as the waiting period. So what this means is if you buy out a product and you die within, say, the first six months, you get paid nothing. But anything paid afterwards, you get your cash. Now, this is essential because it stops people from, from, you know, people who are just about to die, they can't go out and buy life insurance because, you know, then the companies will make a, a big loss. So this protects them against that. Interestingly, um, depending on how you die, they have different waiting periods. So if it's an accidental death, then there is no waiting period. If it's a natural cause, it's normally a six month waiting period. And if you die by suicide, it's a 24 month period, which is quite a new thing because before um, suicide was an exclusion. So if you died by suicide, you didn't get paid anything, uh, but now it's just got a 24 month uh, waiting period. Other things that are excluded from life assurance, um, I was looking the other day, um, is terrorism and what you call it, if you get uh, exposed to radioactive contamination, I think it said, uh, then you don't get whole life assurance. Which is silly, but it's to protect the company because if there's a nuclear fallout or an act of terrorism, you know, a lot of people are going to die and that's going to be quite a big risk for them. So they write it in their little sneaky terms and conditions. Um, so yeah, just be aware of that. So yeah, anyway, back to, back to the chapter uh, at hand. The symbol is N deferred AX, and you can see it's exactly the same as the whole life, except we're adding, well, our K is starting at N, which means um, you can see that's almost like the pure, um, pure endowment, this VNNPX, and then notice that the age changes. I mean, a lot of people forget to change the age when they do the calculation and they get it wrong. But just the deferred contracts are pretty cool. 
um, the variance follows the same formula. I then included this, it's not in the notes, but a deferred term assurance, um, which you will probably, I mean, it's quite a fun one in the sense that, you know, now there's three possible options. If you die before the waiting period, you get nothing. If you die within the waiting period and expiry term, you get something. But if you die after the expiry term, you get nothing. That might be in the exam, so take a look at it. Although I'm sure they'll make it a little bit more complicated. Okay, um, just to get more about this whole um, payable immediately on death or payable at the end of the year, um, you can make a little approximation. There's two types. The one is when you assume that deaths occur halfway between birthdays, you just add on um, half a percent or half of the discount factor. The other thing is if you assume deaths are uniformly distributed between integer ages, you will bring in delta and you'll change it like that. This one we'll see is much more easier to use mathematically when we have to calculate the variance, but we'll get to that right at the end. Um, one thing to notice is that this is kind of like the format for each of these symbols except for the endowment assurance. The endowment assurance has, you know, the term assurance which takes on the same format. I mean, I could also have written 1 plus i to the power of a half. But the pure endowment, because it's paid on survival, it's the same whether it's paid immediately on death or at the end of year of death because it's not based on death. So there is no um, adjustment or approximation that you need to do. So bear that in mind. Um, again, it's a very silly mistake that's quite common and that is to just add one of these approximation figures to this guy here. Always remember to split it out into each one separately. Then, you know, then there's just a simple variance calculation. Uh, you can pause and check it out. Um, yeah, pause it there. Okay, cool. And yeah, basically when it comes to variance, go for this, always assume that deaths occur halfway between birthdays. This just makes the maths easier um, when it comes over here. You know, the other one gets a little bit tricky. If the examiner's being mean, then they will use um, that other assumption. But if you can choose, choose that. And remember always to write out your assumption. I think there's like half a mark uh, for getting that. So yeah, that is basically chapter one, life insurance contracts for CT5. And if you want to learn something from this chapter, just remember this diagram. You can either die or you can survive. If you die, you get whole life assurance. If you're gonna survive, get pure endowment. This one, whole life assurance can have an expiry date and you can combine them to get the stupid contract known as endowment assurance. And yeah, that is chapter one, life assurance contracts. I'm MJ, the student actuary. Thank you for watching. Uh, stop.